doesn't kill you makes you stronger Stand a little taller Well, in her new book, Journey to Health, social influencer Simone Anderson documents how she lost more than half her body weight, 92 kilograms, gathered a whole heap of online followers and found a new way of life. She joins us now to tell us all about it. Welcome, Simone. Yeah, Good great morning. <laughs> Absolute pleasure to have you here. You were one of our first guests on the cafe. I was. Yeah, like, yeah, two a while ago, ago. Yeah, yeah, so, so very long ago. And you've just, and you're doing so well then and you've come so much further since then. No, oh, thank you. Um, you. You talk about in the introduction to your book that you couldn't buy scales. You had to go and get commercial scales because household ones didn't weigh enough or they didn't weigh you because you were 169 kilos. Yeah, literally every household scale sort of said error. And so it had been about three years since I'd managed to weigh myself. So I remember I was interning at a jewellery factory and they had this massive set of commercial scales. So I thought, this is my chance. And I had to sneak on that in my lunch break. And what went through your head when you saw how much you weighed? It was the first moment that I realised I couldn't lie to myself about my weight anymore and that it was this moment, it was make or break for me, and I had to make a change then or there. So you had some wake-up calls. What were the other ones? Are there anything you know specific you can remember? Yeah, there wasn't one specific moment, unfortunately. That's what everyone wants. But it was these tiny little moments that individually, they didn't seem like a massive deal at the time. But looking back over the build-up of these insignificant little events, they were massive. And it, little things like not wanting to bring the rubbish bin up the driveway because... It made me that tired. and having, puffed. Yeah, yeah, had to psych myself into it for an hour and a half. And at 23, that's not something you should be worrying about. And no. I bet you probably look for the closest car park at the door of the supermarket. Always. Yeah, Everything. yeah I did not too. Escalators. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, obviously a lot of health risks associated with being that big too, isn't there? Oh, definitely. You know, so many health risks, including diabetes and everything like that. So you made a move, like there's some pictures on screen there of you, and uh, you went, right... I'm going to do something about this. What, what did you do? What was the first thing that you did? My first steps, I thought, okay, if I can just get myself active, that's, you know, that's a massive change for me because at that point of time I wasn't doing any exercise. So I started with an hour walk or an hour swim a day and that just got me moving because at that point I was so large that anything too high impact, it really hurt my joints. So I thought if I can do this... That's great. And then my, you know, my first step was food, was at that time I was eating so much processed food and it was just all high carb, all high sugar. So I thought if I can cut out processed foods and try and eat most foods that didn't come in a packet really, nothing with numbers, mm. then that's a really good start. So what would a breakfast have been, have been for you in the past? Literally stopping at the bakery on the way to work and getting a pie and a donut and a muffin. And so what did you change it out for? Um, I, at that point I would start and I would have, you know, some eggs or an omelette or something like that or I, you know, now I have a protein shake for breakfast every morning. And how hard is it to make that mental switch? Because, you know, people when they are overweight, they know they're overweight. Yeah. But to make that mental switch is the hardest thing, isn't it? Oh, it was incredibly difficult and it, to make those changes you really have to want them and I guess for years I wasn't mentally ready to tackle those massive changes so I, I had to get myself in this headspace where I thought okay I'm going to come from this from a space of love rather than hatred and really love myself into this new journey rather than hate every step of, you know, of the way. Because there's a lot of, you know, I'll start this next week, I'll just have another pie, you know, here, yeah, I'll make this my last nice meal. And that goes on for years. How did you end up getting so big, do you think? It was honestly just lack of exercise. So absolutely all my exercise went out the window and just continuously eating and eating worse foods. And I guess I just continued to stretch my stomach to a point where I never felt satisfied. Mm. I could eat and eat and eat and I never felt full. Did you decide, once you decided to do this whole process and lose the weight, obviously it's a lot of it's a mental game for you, yeah. you decided to share it on social media and people started commenting and paying attention to what you're doing. Did you expect the attention that you ended up getting? A hundred percent not. I started this and it was so selfishly, it was just for me and I thought the times in the past when I've been the most successful with my weight loss is when I had told the most people. So I had this like triggering point and I thought, well if I post this on my you know, on my social media for my friends and family to see, then I have got, you know, I'm so accountable. I'm so accountable to all, the, at, at the time, I think it was 800 people. And then over the course of, you know, a few weeks, a few months, friends of friends started following and then people I didn't even know. And that was, it was so odd for me. I, I wondered why they were even interested or what, you know, what they were watching for. And this journey, I guess, has changed your whole life. But, but before you answer that, can you tell me this? Were you big as a child? I actually wasn't. I was incredibly active. I was swimming twice a day, so morning and evening, training wow. for an hour at both sessions. I played at every sports school, you know, team at school. Food at home? Healthy. Mum made incredibly healthy meals, but to the point where it sort of became 
a downfall of mine because it meant every time I went to a friend's birthday party and there was junk food on the table, <laughs> I would gorge until I would vomit because it was so rare for me to have that sort of food. Mm. Mm. Okay, yes. But, you know, this has been a big sort of life-changing journey for you in so many different ways. Has it been enjoyable? I have loved every step of the way. And people often ask me if I would change and go back and change my habits or change what I've been through. I honestly would, and I truly think that what I've been through and this journey that I've been through has built me into the person that I am today, made me so much stronger, so much more resilient, and I'm, yeah, I'm so proud of where I've come from. How do you deal, though, with the, because obviously online you have that small following that just gained momentum. How many followers have you got now? Um, nearly 600,000. Wow. 600,000, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and we know that on the internet people can be incredibly cruel. How do you deal with the people that, uh, or the trolls? I found it so difficult at first, and it's something that I really had to teach myself different ways of dealing with, you know, these nasty comments because I'm a people pleaser and I want everyone to like me. So when I started seeing these negative comments come through, I was like, I don't like this. How do I deal with this? And I would cry for days and I'd have sleepless nights. And I honestly, I come up with little tactics. I will hide the comment, I'll delete it instantly, block the person, and just realise that actually if you're reaching out to someone you don't know online and calling them ugly or fat or stupid, it's probably more of an issue that they have in themselves mm. than something that I'm doing wrong. And but you just think of the people you're inspiring, you know. Oh, that, totally. That, that's the payoff, really, isn't Absolutely. it? For every idiot, there's 20,000, maybe, <laughs> that are getting inspired by you. What's it like travelling around the world doing media interviews? Is that quite fun or spooky? Um, initially, it started off being very terrifying, and it was very much out of my comfort zone. Now it's something I actually, every time I leave, you know, a media interview or something like this, I have a m huge thrill, and I feel like I'm on cloud nine. So it's something that... I have taught myself to love, I guess. <laughs> mm. I think what's also so fascinating for people, that oh, you get to talk to people like Tyra Banks and everything, but you, you lost all of this weight, uh, and then you realised that that wasn't the end of your journey at all, was it? Because you had all of this excess skin. Yes, I guess you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. I had a lot of excess skin, and I mean, I knew the reality of extreme weight loss, you know, this was a potential, but actually when you saw your body forming and changing and, you know, it all hanging off you, it was something that was really hard to come to terms with, and I... Day by day, I sort of had to, you know, teach myself ways to come, become used to this loose skin and ways to deal with it, ways, you know, wearing two pairs of undies and compression undies mm. and things like that to deal with it. But it definitely wasn't an easy part of the journey. If you were the Minister of Health in New Zealand right now, because we do face a bit of an epidemic with child obesity, what would you do? What would be the one thing that you think we need to do? I think it would definitely be bringing sort of teaching kids about healthy eating and, you know, the, the nutritious foods that there are out there and steering them away from processed foods because it's so easy to grab that convenient option. But when you teach kids the joys of cooking and the joys of, you know, making your own meals, it can become fun and it can mm. be something that they actually can enjoy doing. Yeah, Brilliant. absolutely. So, ah, what, yeah, so what's next you. for you? <laughs> what's your next step? You've just come back from some recent surgery in the States. I have. So I've just undergone lower body skin removal surgery, which was massive for me. So my main focus right now is just on getting back to being fit. Right now I still can't exercise, so I can't wait till I can. And just really trying to tone back up. I mean, massive focus is just turning my journey around to help other people and really inspire others. Which you have started to do already with your online following and also the book as well. Simone Anderson's book, Journey to Health, is available now and you can find out more information about her on her website or a Facebook page or Instagram page, you name it. You can find Simone there and she's a, she's a very inspirational person yeah. to follow. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for yeah, having me. Great to see you.